When I first read the album for Carrion as a reverse horror, I knew I would get into something weird, especially since it was published by Devolver Digital, which are fond of releasing games with bizarre premises. And boy does it deliver, you get to play as the monster from the horror movies, they have been inspired by the thing from 1982 and the like, even the main menu gives a sensation of visceral fear. The story is, you're some kind of otherworldly organized trap in a lab, and must find a way out by carving a bloody path, eating the mentor you can help, infect the ripe soil so the ever-growing pulsating masses of flesh rip out the sealed doors, possess the humans to safely scout ahead, or to do some dirty work from safe distance, and ultimately escape, unleashing who knows what kind of horror upon the world. There are also flashbacks making us see the science expedition who discovered the creature. Funny enough, it used to have the ability to transform into a human already, but got discovered, and somehow had to it removed. Because of this, it has to wreck laps for it. It's also interesting how the devs handle the evolutions for progression, they are not just extra power-ups. But depending on how much health the monster has, you can only use a set tier of abilities, and, smartly, when you're at full health, you get the most aggressive and damage inducing ones, while if you're at third of health, they are focused on stealth and immobilizing the humans from a distance. It's neat. This also influences the backtracking, as you can get certain upgrades right away, and need abilities only gain later on for specific secondary challenges. So that's Carrion. It's quite a cool game, but I would like to talk about something else related to it. On the Steam page, it's labeled as a Metroidvania. I always reflect every time I see this term. Why? Well, let's start from the beginning. What's its origin? It's a portmanteau of the words Metroid and Castlevania, and we associate that word with those two franchises because of the mechanical features that got assimilated into this genre. Specifically, the limited but not restrained exploration of Metroid and the symbol RPG plus collectathon mechanics from Symphony of the Night. Every time I hear this term it makes me always think of the interviews of Igarashi and Miyazaki, how both of them were inspired by the Legend of Zelda games, and yet, Aaron draws the parallels with the Metroid series, as if it was the main source. I ask myself, why this confusion? Why people draw comparison with the Metroid games even though their inspiration was another one? My suspicion is that both Super Metroid and The Rage of Zelda are into the past belong to the un genre of explorative games. Let's do things in order. What do I mean as un genre? Well, when we think of a genre, we visualize a series of mechanics set in stone that define a game belonging to a certain category, usually in a self descriptive way. We call certain games first person shooters because their mechanics revolve around shooting guns from a first person perspective. We call certain games point and click adventure because the player point and clicks with the mouse on objects they want to interact. We call certain games 2D platformers because they revolve around jumping challenges from a platform to platform in a bi-dimensional space and so on. Those are genres, and an genre is, what I see, a series of design philosophies and practices that are not rigorous in their implementation and therefore can be applied to diverse games even though their actual genres are completely different. Hollow Knight, Pseudo Regalia, Journey to the Savage Planet. All of these games are regarded as metroidvanias, and yet, if you want to be strict about the definition, only Hollow Knight seems to fit the description. But all of them get grouped together, not because their genre is the same, but because their own genre is. So let's try to define it then, in the simplest way possible. How can we describe the genre of explorative games so to connect Super Metroid and the Link to the Past together? Here is my best attempt. An explorative game is characterized by the organic exploration and re-exploration of areas new and old throughout the usage of abilities, gadgets and keys. In this context, organic exploration means the possibility for the player to move between areas without breaking the flow of movement, but also with some restriction of access to the game world. An ability independently if it's granted at the start or gain during the session, is something the player has no restriction over and can be used in any context. Double jumping, the most common mechanical trope in this sort of games, is an ability. The player can do it anytime and anywhere, without restrictions. A gadget is a tool that uses a limited resource. You can increase its capacity, but if the player runs out, they'll have to refill it in a way. In Carrion's case, the 
gadget is an electricity bar that allows for some nifty abilities, such as invisibility, but once exhausted, must be recharged from a dedicated charger. Other examples include something like a mana gouge for spells, or ammo for a weapon. To reiterate, it's something with a defined and limited amount of uses, expandable, yes, but still finite and needing replenishing once exhausted. Keys are self-explanatory, it can be something as mundane as get the blue key to open the blue door, or it can be something more nuanced, like flags in the game's code that unlock portions of the game once certain criteria have been satisfied. You might be asking, why are you doing this? And the answer is, one, rambling about insignificant stuff makes good, uh, decent, uh, watchable, it makes content, and two, it's a bit of a peeve of mine. The term Metroid Vena is only useful if you are already familiar with this ungenre, but it sounds weird for someone who might be approaching gaming for the first time, or someone that has simply never approached such titles with such properties. So having an independent explanation, and if this admitted is slightly bizarre, could be beneficial. I don't expect it to take off, but hey, maybe it will be useful to someone.